Shakespeare's Titus Andronicus is a bloody gruesome play. I'm sure you guys have all heard of the revenge killings, the cannibalisms, the rape, the murder. It is an amazing story about Titus Andronicus, who's Rome's most honored general. So he went to war to fight against the Goths and came back after 10 years to find out he only has four sons left alive out of 25. And he has captured the Goth queen Tamora and her sons and her lover, Aaron the Moor. And according to his, his duty, Titus, who is a law abiding general, he is to the letter of the law in tradition and culture. So according to Roman's tradition, he's, he sacrifices her eldest son. And of course, do you think Tamara's going to sit around and just accept this? No, she vows revenge. And this is our journey. These two, Titus and, and Tamara, are just at the edge of evil that will do anything to exact their revenge. So Rome needs a new emperor. And of course, Titus, the Roman general, is nominated emperor by his brother, Marcus, and who is one of Rome's tribunes. Titus, however, declines, which I believe is his major stay. You went to Rome war for 10 years, and you don't want to be the emperor? I mean, what was the whole point of going to war and being uh, the most, you know, uh, uh honored general so he would have had so much power so instead this is of course a story and you have to have like inciting incident so this leads a wide opening when he, when he declines instead he nominates Saturnius to seal the bond of friendship the new emperor Saturnius offers to marry Titus daughter Lavinia well that's nice okay so he gets in there with Lavinia however the soap opera twist Lavinia, Titus's daughter, is already pledged to Bassinus, the other brother. So Sedrinius, who is now infatuated by Tamara, the older woman, makes her empress instead. So now we got a problem. Uh, Tamara is empress, and we've got Tamara, who is plotting revenge. And, you know, Tamara's sons... Aaron, Sharon, and Demetrius avenge their mother by raping and mutilating Lavinia, Titus's daughter, and killing Basimus, the who just became emperor. So these families, you know, they get to the top and then they they don't hold their position for long. And Aaron falsely implicates two of Titus's sons in the murder. Dun dun dun. So now Titus' sons are implicated in murder, which in turn Titus vows revenge and will send his surviving son, Lucius. So he's got one son left to the Goths to raise an army. So, you know, now his son's going to raise an army. Titus achieves his revenge by killing Tamara's sons and serving them up to her at a banquet. So that's some cannibalism right there. Going to invite Tamara and her lover to the banquet. Mmm. Fresh off the menu, we have a casserole of your son. So how would you like a delicious slice of a, of a lamb chop, but a foot and a thigh? And then, of course, you know, Titus will kill, kill her. But Titus himself is killed by Saturnius, and his death is avenged by Ludicus, who is Lucius, who is Tamar's son, who is made emperor. So that's kind of just a real quick recap, but I will give you, um, we're going to go over act one, scene one. So after the death of the emperor of Rome, that's how it starts. When Titus comes back from war, the emperor of Rome, his two sons are Saturnius and Bassinus. So they ask the masses, which is the public, the people to determine who should succeed to the throne. And of course, the older brother, Saturnia, says, well, of course, I'm the firstborn, and uh, I should be emperor. And the second, of course, second sucks, being the middle or second. Well, it doesn't mean that you're any less, but you're just born second. So, like, you know, I mean, like, Prince Harry, he said, see you later, everyone. My brother William is going to be 
be the king. So why do I have to be in this royal stuff? So I'll just say goodbye, royal thing. So it's kind of like that. So, but he says, but you know, I have good virtues and graciousness. So this one actually wants to, wants to be voted as emperor, unlike Prince Harry. So, but they are silenced by the tribune of the people, Marcus Andronis, who announces that the people of Rome have elected to the throne, Titus Andronicus. Isn't that amazing? The general who has spent the last 10 years of his life fighting for Rome, which is only fair. So, but Titus enters and, and he comes in front of all the people with his four living sons, two were in coffins, and he brings with him who he has captive, Tamara, the queen of the Goths, her three sons, and Aaron the Moor. So, Titus, you know, following Roman custom, he sacrifices Tamara's son in exchange of his own dead offspring. So even though Tamara, please and please, please don't kill my son. Please don't kill my eldest son. You know, the Roman general is just going to do what he's always done. He's just going to stick to the law. So after that, Marcus, you know, offers Titus the scepter of Rome, but Titus doesn't want it. He, he refuses it basically because he's of his old age. He states that Saturn should be an emperor because he's eldest son. So here we are following tradition, the law, and just how it has been for ages and ages. And uh, Saturnus returns the favor by taking his daughter Lavinius as empress. But the second son, Bassinus, revolts against this, claiming that Lavinia is betrothed, betrothed to him. So there was the problem right there. You know, well, you know, everyone's going to be talking about that. No one likes, you know, having a woman. Back then, she had to be a virgin and, and two brothers sharing the same woman. is just not going to cut it great. So, so Bar Barassinus, you know, takes her away with the aid of Lavinia's remaining brothers, Lucas, Lucius, Mutius, Quintus, and Martus. And so there's four brothers left, um, sons of Titus. But when, when... Mutius intercedes with Titus on behalf of his fleeing, fleeing sister. Titus strikes him down and kills him. Uh-oh, that's not good. It's only after his other son pleads with him that Titus even allows Mutius to be entered into the family tome. So, publicly humiliated by the loss of Lavinia, the emperor, Satras, announces that he will take instead Tamora as his empress. Hey, she's beautiful, she's older, and, you know, good for an older woman come the empress and now this is a woman who was scorned and she is exacting her revenge. The new empress slyly says to him to accept the apologies of Titus and his sons secretly promising to Serenus that she'll help him find another way to exact revenge. So here's the plot. They're going to exact revenge on his brother because you don't mess with the emperor. And um, they're going to have a big feast. Tell everyone it's a love day, and Titus offers to organize a hunt for him the next day, and Sanaris, you know, accepts. So here's Titus, you know, not taking the emperor position, then offering to help to find his son um, that took Lavinia. So Act One really is, you know, unraveling, uh, unraveling how the plot will be taking place because of son's loss, the contest for the crown, revenge between Titus and Tamara, and, you know, just brothers scorned, a mother scorned, a Roman general with the loss of his sons following the law. He just wanted to follow the law, but following the law didn't really do well for him. And uh, so the really plant the seed that... You cannot, you know, make the emperor look foolish. And that's not good because he will, you know, always secretly plot to get that back, especially the woman. So Tamara, Tamara is secretly going to get, like, her revenge. And these are things that are just gonna play havoc in act two so so Tamara takes her lover 
and <laughs> of course she's got to have her lover and um and then um there's a hunting party and Aaron finds a bag of gold on a tree Tamara finds an urgent to make love to her however Aaron is ruled by vengeance and asks her to deliver the letter to Sandra's the couple is spotted in their physical intimacy by Bassinus and Lavinia, who proceed to roundly insult Tamara and Lavinia by, by, you know, just, you know, to find the mother and the arms of her lover is not good. And, and uh, so, you know, Charon and Demetrius stab Barnes to death in defense of their mother's honor of course the her she's got good sons to defend her honor and um when Tamara wants to stab Lavinia her sons stop her wishing to keep her alive until they have satisfied their lust so Lavinia is gonna be raped and um they don't want anyone to to know that they raped her so they they take out her tongue and chop her arms off so as you know it's really grueling but you know strong-winded willed uh, Lavinia is going to be able to write out and, and and tell everyone what happened to her and um the scenes are vicious and bloody and gruesome and uh you know they're going to find Barassia's corpse which it's thrown into a pit and Quintus and Martis are trapped in the same, and Lavinia has, you know, has been violated. 